Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. I don't mind PR agents. I really don't. There are some of them and the approaches that they take that I do mind. And as someone who is considered a blogger, although I've been publishing on the web for a lot longer than, well, blogging was a word, uh, you know, there's, there's a fine line that a lot of PR public relations agents uh, don't realize is there. And I'm now being asked by a, a journalist to give my thoughts about PR and their direct role within the blogging community. The question is, is it reasonable for PRs to target the blogging community? And to say the blogging community um, is there, it's accurate, but a blog isn't a community. And I don't know if there's a general blogging community. There are subsets of types of blogs and genres and they themselves are communities um, and the people who write uh, for these communities or within these communities are bloggers or they have a blog. Uh, the bottom line is, is I am not a journalist. I'm a columnist. I write a, co a monthly column for CPU Magazine. Uh, I'm a video caster, so I stream live video at live.perlo.com, publish on YouTube, top 70, most subscribed all time. Um, I've got a blog. I help other people blog. I don't know what I am, but the one thing I'm not is a, a full-on media agency. I'm not a publication, so to speak. I, I am just a, a someone who enjoys technology uh, and apparently with about almost 600 people watching live right now there are a few others who would uh, um, I guess be of a similar mind so instead of responding by text I thought I'd respond in video format and answer this question uh, broadly because well even if I responded by email and if it was very very long the journalist would likely only take like one sentence out of that if he took anything and I wanted to bring this up as a discussion point with other bloggers who are out there. So if you're blogging, pay attention because I want to hear your feedback on uh, this particular topic. I think it's reasonable for PR folk to contact bloggers or people who are just, you know, writing on the web without going through any official outlet uh, and define official outlet. I don't know. There's a lot of gray area here. Uh, but I think the bottom line is, is bloggers are just doing it because they want to do it, not because they're necessarily getting paid to do it. I think it's reasonable with these five things in mind. Number one, be transparent and expect transparency in return. So don't email us pretending that you're someone you're not. Uh, don't email us saying, hey, I've been reading your blog and uh, you know, I thought I, you were mentioning this and I thought you'd be interested in this site. It's really cool. I just started using it last week when in fact, a, you didn't, and B, you are paid representative of that particular company. It's okay for you to say, hey, I, you know, I just ran across your blog, I was reading this, I'm, an, I'm, I'm a PR agent for this website, um, you know, you, you might want to take a look, you know, not, you just see this is, this is why, and I just wanted to spread the word about it. The likelihood, however, of me personally posting that as a follow-up or whatever is very slim, and the likelihood of you posting that as a comment in that post and me moderating that comment and passing it through is also very slim. Um, but the bottom line is, is that if you're not transparent about it, uh, number one, I'm going to remember you. And number two, I'm going to blog about that. I'm going to blog about the fact that you were not transparent about who you were and what you were doing. And then, of course, um, number two, don't ask for links. And that, I think, is... It's rude, you know, to come and give some something to somebody and say, hey, we're doing this new story, you want to link to it, and, and you're here. This is all you got to do is just link to this and you'll be fine. And, and this will be great. It, whatever the pitch is, you know, if I'm interested, yeah, I'll talk about it. If I'm not, and 99.999% of the time I'm not, uh, I'm just not that kind of blogger. Uh, it's just, it. I've got too much going on. I'm not a, a, a true press release related, uh, you know, oriented blogger. Um, that is key. When you ask for links, you are going too far. Number three, B 
be proactive with review units or copies. The just about the only way to get me to talk about something or write about something is to put it in my hand. Whether that's sending me a review code, if it's a piece of software, uh, or whether that's sending me a, an actual product. You know, it's not. There are some products that I will go out and buy and talk about, and then there are other products that you know I will ask to review, uh, and there are other products that kind of get sent to me. They just say, hey, you know, if you like it, cool. Not, no big deal. Let us know your thoughts. And that's kind of goes back to the issue of transparency or linking. If you send me a product to review, or if I ask for a review copy and the review is not positive, is that my fault? I mean, if I'm being honest and direct and you know, being a blogger, is it my fault? If your product or service sucks, no. Uh, should you be admonished uh, as a PR agent for uh, generating that kind of press? No. If your job, if your responsibility was to attract attention to a product, uh, you've done your job. You know, at that point, you can only hope for the best. But it, it kind of comes down to if your product or service sucks, it doesn't matter how much you're paying your PR agency. Your product or service still sucks. Okay. Okay, and I, I hope you know that. Just not like I haven't run into that issue before. You can't, you, you just can't, you can't cover up that kind of junk. You just can't. Number four, but the, the, the bottom line for that one is being proactive about it. Don't make me fish for something, and then even if I do fish for it, don't make it such a kludge to get a hold of. That's, that's a big turnoff, especially if you're looking for coverage, or if you initiated communication in the first place. Big turnoff. Number four, know who they are and why they matter. Kind of goes back to, you know, number one, being transparent, because if you send me an email saying, hey, I've been reading your blog, and then you send me a link that is only related to, like, maybe one post that I made, um, I'm like, okay, you haven't read my blog. It's pretty darn obvious. Now, if you start mentioning obscure details about my life and like things that only someone who had been reading my blog would know about, uh, then I'd be more inclined to believe you. So I'm not going to give away any, you know, personal secrets necessarily to anybody who's listening to this, but I, I think you know what I mean. You know when you're getting a snow job. And if you send me a link to something that I'm just not this is not my forte, it's not what I'm interested in, there's no way I'd even talk about it, it's just going to go to the bit bucket. Uh, conversely, like I said, some of the things that have come from me doing videos, sometimes a product will show up on my doorstep, whether it's a game, uh, whether it's hardware, which I love, whether it's software, it'll just show up. And then I'm like, oh, cool, okay, so I've got it sitting here, I'll have a great, there'll be a greater chance of me taking a look rather than just getting flooded in my inbox like it's a pain in the neck to chase anything down. People who know me know that those are the things I'm interested in. Uh, if a PR agency sent me, like, uh, I don't know, crocheting needles, and it's never happened, uh, but I'd be like, uh okay because I'm a blogger that, that makes no sense I mean I'm not saying that I don't have an audience that has crocheting people in it but I'm just saying if you do not know the blogger you're going for the person you're talking about and to uh, why are you even bothering you've got to know more about them than they know about you you have to do your your do your research I mean the first thing when anybody sends me a link to a name or a domain name the first thing I do the first thing I do is go to Google. Who is this person? What have they done? What are people saying? Where are they active? Are they are they for real? You know, I check. Trust me, I check names. Believe it or not, I do that because you just you want to know as much about someone else when you're communicating with them. And it's certainly if it's your job, dude, Google is right there. And the worst thing you could do is say this to me. I didn't know how to get a hold of you. My God, I give out my email address in all thousand plus videos I have on YouTube. Well, just about every one of them, at least the recent ones. I'm the first Chris on Google. I'm on Twitter with like 5,000 followers. It's not like I can't be, I put my email address right there on the website. It's like you have to try to not find me. So don't give me that, you know, right off the bat because then I know you're definitely uh, someone who is not a very good PR agent. Part of PR is knowing the the, uh, the relations and the relationships. And by the way, as some as just a, me, I'd rather get to know someone for who they are, not where they work, who they work for. Uh, 
um, because you never know if they're going to work there forever. And I want to develop more personal relationships with people. It's just the kind of guy I am. Even with in professional circles, you know, the more I know, the better I can communicate, and the more open I am about you know giving you direct and, and candid feedback about the things that you may be doing. Number five, and I'm going to take the Twitter approach with this now that I brought it up. Keep it short and sweet. No press releases. I mean, I look at press releases, I'm like, eh, delete. Scan, delete. Usually if it's a hardware press release, they don't want to send you a review unit, delete. Um, software, if they didn't offer a review code, delete. It's just, I get so much, delete, delete. If you cannot give me what it is, what you're going for, how you can help, etc., in 140 characters or less, That's not my fault. Maybe you should post your press releases on Twitter. Guarantee a lot more people would probably pay attention to them that way. That's for darn sure. Don't expect to be an outsider and understand the inside track. And like I said, there are a lot of circles, a lot of blogging community circles. But if you are in PR and you're trying to approach the blogging community um, and you're not blogging or you're not a part of any of these social networks, You've got your work cut out for you. I uh, I've given product feedback, and I'm the, this is the company's going to remain absolutely nameless. They're probably never even going to see this video, but it's a big company, and it's not anyone that anybody here would guess. Um, I gave them valid feedback, candid feedback, privately about their product and how they could improve it and why they shouldn't launch it until these things were ready. And I was labeled as uh, someone who should not be communicated with again. I wasn't rude about it. I talked directly to the engineers. I gave them, you know, precise uh, examples. I was, I was very adamant, but not negative, and I was colored that way. So, what's the likelihood of me ever wanting to, you know, do anything with that company again? Well, if they're even going to reach out to me, but it gets worse. The person that they hired to be their blogging liaison wasn't a blogger. They already had someone at the company who's a well-known blogger and that person didn't get the position this other person did. So, I I really don't, you know, I'd rather get to know you for who you are and if you happen to be a PR agent, great, that's kind of a side benefit, but dude, uh, don't, I, I'm not going to say PR is dead, but geez, man, I, you know, you guys, does that, can, am I relating to anybody there? Seriously? I mean, people get hired for positions to talk about things that they don't care about. They're not passionate about these products. They're hired to be passionate about these products. You can't hire a customer evangelist. They just are an evangelist. That's, you can't, they either are or they're not. If it's in their title, they're probably not what's in their title, especially if the word evangelist is in there. I, I really don't place a lot of uh, faith in titles for that very reason. Um, and I realize that this is you know, kind of a pontificating video, but it's, it's a big issue. It's not, it's not just me. There are a lot of bloggers out there. You may be blogging. Uh, you may be blogging just about anywhere. And that brings me to, it's kind of a final point just to kind of wrap it up, especially to PR agents who are all about getting big press and major press because that gets attention. I hate to tell you, and I, I, not to diminish everything that I've done because it's been very important uh, for me and as well as for the rest of the people who follow me, my community, this general tech community, but audience size, it's, it's important because of course you're dealing with numbers, but it doesn't matter as much anymore. We've got a democratization of content. It, if you've written something good and, a, and it, that message resonates with other people who discover it for, through a variety of ways, whether it's on a social bookmarking service or, or what have you, then did it matter that they only had maybe three subscribers to their RSS feed? Eh, you know, sure, going after someone who's got a large audience size, there's a greater opportunity of more people finding out about what you do, but that doesn't mean they should be your only target. As a PR agent, you have to treat everybody, everybody and every blogger as if they were Michael Arrington from TechCrunch, 
as if they are Robert Scoble, as if they were, you name the A-list blogger, okay? Especially in the world of, of tech or just any industry, really. It, it applies to every industry. If you are, you know, hell bent on getting the big press, yeah, that's good. I mean, hey, press is press, you know, I, I can't argue with that. Coverage is coverage. But don't ignore someone you don't know at your own peril. Or you do, or don't do it. Otherwise, you're doing it at your own peril. Sorry, doing a little self-editing there. Um, you never know who you're talking to. You never know who's going to be in the room. And I tell you, uh, since Twitter and doing the live video feed, uh, a lot of people have learned more about me than they ever wanted to know. And that's opened up so many doors, so many doors and opportunities for me. Uh, I'm my own PR agent in the sense that I just look at what I think is interesting and other people, if they like it, they do. If they don't, they don't. I'm passionate about the things I'm interested in. Everybody is, no matter what it is. And you have to understand that as a blogger, we're passionate as a video caster, as someone who posts videos to YouTube and whatnot, we are passionate about the things that we're interested in. That has to factor into the equation. Press releases are not aimed at people who are passionate. They're aimed at people who are used to reprinting. So that's my response. Um, and uh, I, uh, I'm probably going to wrap it up into, you know, simple text to pass it along and then let this guy know when the video has been posted because I think he needs a response pretty quickly. But I'm just curious. Uh, who out there is in PR, knows someone in PR, um, who has a blog or who has been approached by a PR agent for something that you've done or you've written? Uh, I'm just interested. I mean, you never know when you publish. In fact, uh, one of the... Uh, uh, one of the bloggers, Kat just told me, one of the bloggers on LockerGnome.com had written a political article that uh, uh, in a, like a, a press agency is going to pay her to do. So she was blogging for free, and someone's going to pay her for the stuff that she's written because she's written it very well. She's a blogger. She's not getting paid directly for this stuff. She's doing it because she's passionate. She's got ideas that she wants to share. It's, it just takes, it flies in the face of PR and spin. There, you can spin it as much as you want to spin it. If it, if it, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. I mean, that's, I guess you should just leave it there. Anyway, my email address is chris at perillo.com. Please, no pitches. Don't ask me to link. Don't ask me. Don't ask, don't ask. I'll give, but just don't ask, don't ask, don't ask. Unless you've got something to offer back. And even then, that's questionable. You're also welcome to join us in our chat room uh, where we're typically talking tech. Every once in a while, people will see a product float across my desk and they'll ask me, all 600 will ask me, well, at least the people who are watching live will ask me, what is it? Where'd you get it? Uh, that's PR. That's PR you just can't pay for. See, and now don't you wish... Uh, I'm looking for something that I've got on my desk. But everything I've got on my desk, I've bought. Hmm. Well, anyway, uh, if you want to join us in our live chat community with the video streaming thing, we're doing it 24 hours a day. Even if I'm not here, other people certainly are, and uh, you can get a feel for the flavor of our geeky community. Always talking about hardware, software, internet tips, tricks products to make our lives better, services that will help us do the things that we want to do as human beings, you name it. But the only place to find us is at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.